When it comes to formatting spreadsheets, we have a lot of options to choose from in Excel, and making the wrong choice can lead to reports that are difficult to read and navigate. So in this video, we're going to look at seven different formatting battles in Excel. Everything from simple number formatting to drastically improving the readability of financial reports. And for all my Excel geeks out there, I'm also going to cover Merge and Center versus Center Across Selection. So let's go. So we're going to be working with this income statement, and the first battle we'll look at is number formatting. When formatting monetary values like this, we really have two options. The first is the currency style format. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift 4. The next style is the accounting style format. Now this doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, but you can press this button here in the ribbon to apply it. The difference between these two formats, the first thing you'll notice is the currency symbol. For the currency format, it's placed directly next to the numbers. For the accounting format, it's aligned to the left over here, and then the numbers are aligned to the right. And this just makes the numbers a bit easier to read because they're not cluttered with the currency symbol right next to it. The next difference you'll notice is how zeros are displayed. With currency, there's zeros. With the accounting style format, a zero is displayed with a dash. Another difference is that negative numbers are displayed in parentheses with accounting. Here we have a dash in front of the negative number. However, you can change the formatting by right-clicking, going Format Cells, and then under Currency here, you can choose one of these other negative number styles and apply it to match the accounting style. Now, for most financial statements like this, the accounting style format is globally accepted. And I think one of the main reasons, again, is that the numbers are just a bit easier to read with that currency symbol aligned to the left. Now, one place I don't like the accounting style format is with charts because the zero is displayed as a dash down here. But of course, we can quickly change this to the currency format. The zero is displayed, which in my opinion makes this a bit easier to read. And of course, you can also decrease the decimals if you don't need to see the cents, which also makes it easier to read. So I've added more columns to our income statement here. And the next thing we need to do is clean up this header row to make it easier to read. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all these columns. I'm actually going to make them narrower, about a 10 width. And then we're going to select the header row and click Wrap Text. That's going to put the text onto multiple lines. Now I want to have the period on the top and then the description of the data on the bottom. As you can see in this column here for the forecast, I want to move forecast down to the second line. Now if I make this narrower, eventually that will happen, but I won't be able to read any of the numbers in the cell. So in order to fix this, what I'm going to do is double click into the cell here, put my text cursor before the F, and then hold Alt and hit Enter. That's going to add a line break. And then we'll go ahead and hit Enter. I'll do it again over here. So double click, Alt, Enter adds a line break. And that way this text will always be on the second row, regardless of how wide or narrow I make the column. Now, an alternative to this technique is having multiple rows of headers. Here I've just split the period into the top row, and then we have the description on the second row. The advantage of this technique is it's a bit easier to work with, especially if you want to copy your periods across and make quick changes to the text on the bottom. The disadvantage is if you're turning filters on or you're converting this to a table or using it with Power Query, you have multiple header rows, which doesn't work. And in those scenarios, you just want to have one row of headers and this wrap text technique works better for that. For our next formatting task, the boss has asked us to highlight any of these cells in this variance column that are greater than 10%. Now, of course, we could manually do that by selecting a cell, going up here to the fill menu and selecting a green color, and then continue to do that for every single cell that's greater than 10%. But this is the manual approach and it would take a lot of time and it's not very flexible. So I'm gonna undo that. And instead, we're going to use conditional formatting. I'm first going to select all the cells regardless of their values, go to conditional formatting on the Home tab, highlight cell rules, and choose greater than. In this box, I'm going to type 10% because that's the value that I want to evaluate against. And then I can choose from any of these formatting options, or I can customize my own. I'll choose green fill with dark green text. It looks pretty nice. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And so that's automatically applied that formatting to all cells that are greater than 10%. And the nice part about conditional formatting is as the values change, let's say this is 90,000 instead, once I hit enter and this recalculates, you'll see that the formatting automatically gets applied here. So this both saves time and makes your reports easier to read. 
So next we'll take a look at one of the biggest formatting debates in all of Excel. Let's say we want to center this header across this entire section here. One way we can do that is with the Merge and Center feature. So on the Home tab right here, we can click Merge and Center. That's going to essentially create one giant cell here and center the text across the entire cell. Now, although this looks nice, it presents a lot of problems. First of all, we can't select the range anymore. If I just want to select this column, once I get to this merge and centered cell, you can see that the selection expands all the way to that cell. So it makes it very difficult to select text and also paste text. It also limits sorting and some other features within Excel. So most Excel pros will tell you to never use merge and center. And there is an alternative. So I'll first turn merge and center off. Again, with these cells selected, we can right click here, choose Format Cells, keyboard shortcut is Control-1, then go to the Alignment tab, and under Horizontal here, we're going to choose Center Across Selection. We'll go ahead and hit OK, and as you can see, the results look the same. The text is centered across all of the cells. However, we can select each of these cells individually. It's not just one big cell, but all the cells can be selected, and therefore we can still make these selections down the column. But center cross selection isn't perfect. If a user accidentally inputs a value here, as you can see, everything recenters. But it can be challenging to figure out where this value is. If I select this cell and hit delete on the keyboard, this value is not deleted. And that's because the value is actually in cell E14. And the only way to see that is up here on the formula bar. With that said, I do think Center Across is the better alternative right now. However, I think Merchant Center would be better if Microsoft fixed some of these selection issues. Another way we can make this report easier to read is by hiding unnecessary rows. So here I might not need to see all of these revenue rows, so I can select all those rows, right click and hide, and that will get them out of the way. Now if I do need to see them, I'll just select the rows above and below, right click unhide, and that will unhide them. But that hiding and unhiding is not very user friendly. So one way to make this better is I'm gonna again select all these rows, go up to the data tab, and in the outline section, I'm going to click the group button. That's going to add this row grouping over here and I can quickly expand and collapse the rows in that group. Just click this button again to expand them and view them. And one little pro tip here, instead of actually clicking this button, you can just click this line anywhere and that will collapse. And you can have multiple sections of groups and also multiple levels. So again, we'll select those rows, group, the keyboard shortcut is shift alt right arrow or we can click group that'll add another group and you'll also notice these buttons up here clicking the two will expand everything and clicking the one will collapse everything all at the same time and this just makes the report much easier to read and navigate now the boss might ask you to display these numbers in thousands or millions to make them easier to read. And one common mistake I see is the number will be typed in like this with a K at the end. And when we do this, this is no longer a number. It's actually a value that is stored as text. And therefore we can't do calculations on it. So this sum function down here is now wrong because the number is not being included in the calculation. But fortunately we can fix this with number formatting. And to do that, I'm going to right click here on the number and choose format cells. Again, keyboard shortcut is control one. And we're going to apply a custom number format. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just scroll up to the top here and I'm going to choose this format. It's easier to work with. And as you can see, we have a sample of our number here. I'm going to go into this type box and I'm going to add a comma to the end. That's going to move the decimal place over essentially dividing this by a thousand. Now out at the end of this, I, in quotation marks, I can put a capital K to show 132K. And then at the beginning of this, I can put a dollar symbol and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we can see that this is displayed in the cell like this and it's still included in the calculation because it is a number and we can also see that full number up here in the formula bar. And one quick note, if you wanted to display this in millions instead, you can add an additional comma here after the first comma. And then if you wanted to see a decimal place, you can put a dot zero and that'll show a decimal place. And of course, we're gonna change the K to an M. And this is the preview of what the number would look like in millions. Now, if you export raw data from a system and it looks like this, you might spend a bunch of time formatting it. I wanna make these headers bold, maybe have a fill color here, maybe I wanna apply some borders uh, here as well, and this can take a lot of time to just apply this formatting. 
One way to greatly speed this up is by using an Excel table. So here I'm gonna just select any cell inside my data range, go to the Home tab, and choose Format as Table. And here I have all these different styling options that I can apply. I'll just choose this blue one, we'll say OK, and that'll instantly apply all of that formatting to my table in one click. You can see I get these nice banded rows that will automatically expand as I add new data. We have the filters turned on as well. We can also go up here to the Table Design tab and turn on the Total Row to instantly get sums at the bottom. We can also write formulas here. So I'm gonna say quantity times price. And when I hit Enter, that's automatically going to copy that formula all the way down the table column here. And then again, I can quickly choose from this dropdown to do a calculation. So Excel tables can save you a ton of time and keep your data nicely organized. There are pros and cons to using them, and I'll put links to additional videos and resources in the description below. But I'm curious to know which of these techniques was your favorite, or if you have any additional best practices that you do for formatting your reports. Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you wanna see other ways to save time in Excel, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.